Okay, I know for a fact that I'm not the first one to say this, but as you may know, Food Fight is bad. Like, really bad. So bad that many reviewers and critics, including myself, consider it to be one of, if not the worst, animated feature of all time. Now, if you ask why is it the worst, everybody will tell you almost the exact same thing. The writing is inconsistent and messed up, the animation is absolute garbage, the characters are like a bunch of creeps you'd find in the dark alleyway, the humor is disturbing, there is nothing here that works, and it resulted into something that's in the levels of bad that is unheard of. Ever since I saw this film, the only thing that I have to wonder is just why is it so bad? Okay, I already explained why, but what I mean by that question is how did it end up becoming the film we all know today. Now, in order to answer that question, I did the one thing that I know what to do best. Research on the movie's history. Now listen carefully to the tale I'm about to tell you, because the answer will lie in one significant moment, and it is not what you think it is. So why exactly is Food Fight considered one of the worst of the worst? Let's find out. Our story all began in 1999. This was a time in animation where it was the tail end of the period called the Disney Renaissance, and new studios were coming out and making a name out of themselves with some animated hits, including DreamWorks Animation, and of course, Pixar. Now, the latter has yet to become the industry titans we all know them today, but they made a massive impact to the world with the first ever computer animated feature, Toy Story, and just made themselves even bigger with the sequel during that year. Meanwhile, there was a studio in Santa Monica, California called Threshold, whom later would be known for making Lego projects that are not the Lego movie and visuals for theme park rides, most namely Star Trek 4D in Las Vegas and Mission Space at Epcot in Walt Disney World. Now, the founder and CEO of the company, Lawrence Kasanoff, or as people call him, Larry, saw the opportunity in Toy Story had both in concept and in the way that Pixar uses CGI as a viable film medium. So he and one of his employees, Joshua Wexler, got an idea to make their own animated film that would be like Toy Story, but instead of having recognizable toys, they would feature recognizable mascots you would find in the grocery store. Think of this action-packed and comedic movie that would feature Captain Crunch, Mr. Clean, Charlie Tuna, and Chester Cheetah, all together in one film. So with that idea in mind, they decided to fully go with it by immediately putting in $25 million into the project and set up plans on what they want to achieve with this new film that they would like to call Food Fight said to be released on Christmas 2003. Now, their goal with the film is to get as many grocery icons and mascots to make cameos in the movie, like what Who Framed Roger Rabbit did with cartoons, and to have their original characters to later be featured in grocery stores as well. If the movie was successful, people would have a chance to actually snack on cereals and snack bars that would feature Dexter Detective, Sunshine Goodness, and Daredevil Dan. <laughs> Imagine that. But admittedly, they did show a bit of promise with the project, announcing a cast that doesn't feature any A-list celebrities, but some recognizable names like Charlie Sheen, Eva Longoria, Ed Asner, Wayne Brady, Harvey Feinstein, Christopher Lloyd, and many more. They would all join together in this computer animated feature whose style would be a tribute to the Looney Tunes cartoons, and Larry was so confident that this would make Threshold, as he would say, the next Pixar. In fact, with all the potential cross promotions they could do with the more than 80 brands they got to appear in the movie, Food Fight would have ended up costing a total of $100 million. Now, the one final ingredient for this movie was someone to be in charge of this ambitious project. Someone that would literally give this supermarket some life. And despite never being in charge of an animated project in his life, Larry decided to step in as both the producer and director of Food Fight. But then came the end of 2002, when tragedy struck. It was reported that all the hard drives that contain every piece of progress they have made of the film were stolen. Despite Kasanov calling it an act of industrial espionage, no one ever knew what happened to the original files to this day. In fact, the only place where you can find just a handful of the original animation is in the 2002 trailer. Now, at this point, some people would just give up and move on to something else, since they pretty much lost everything but not Larry. He took some time to think about what to do at this point and decided not only to continue Food Fight, but go in a brand new direction with his idea in 2004. By the way, if you ever ask someone who actually worked on the movie what's it like to do Food Fight, they will tell you that Larry is, um, 
unique director. He's always full of surprises. Like, you never know if he wants to suddenly change something by saying, in his exact words, make this more awesome or make that 30% better. That, and you should never be fooling around on the job because Kasanov would take it very seriously, and not in the way that you think. During production, the crew would like to have fun having Lady X wearing suggestively sexy clothes and try to seduce X in a very non-subtle manner. What happened was that Larry spotted them doing this and said, hey, that's a good idea, let's put that in the movie. Which explains why this film has these uncomfortably weird sexual innuendos. Now, with that said, Larry's new direction for the film is to still maintain the Looney Tunes style animation, but this time, not not only does he want it to be more over the top, he wants the animation done in motion capture thanks to the help of House of Moves and Image Metrics. I think we can all agree that the cartoony Looney Tunes style and the realistic motion capture are practically opposites and they just cannot work together, but screw it, Larry's the boss, let's just roll with it. In 2005, things are starting to look pretty good for the project. Lionsgate was highly interested to distribute the film thanks to the number of brands and celebrities attached to it, and the financing company, Story Arc, join in to give the movie an additional $20 million, earning a total budget of $45 million. All this is awesome, but there is just one problem. The production was so disorganized that all it did was just continuously miss deadlines. They wanted to release it somewhere in 2006 and 2007, but everybody knew at this point it was never gonna happen. The last that was ever heard of the production was that both Lionsgate and Story Art grew very impatient, that the only thing it ever did was just miss deadlines. It wasn't until 2011 when Food Fight was auctioned off for $2.5 million to Fireman's Fund Industrial Company, where they stepped in with one goal in mind. Finish the movie ASAP in the cheapest way possible. The process here is best described like you're trying to finish up making a skyscraper, but the only thing you can use to support the pieces together is with scotch tape. Despite the animation being incomplete, Fireman's Fund finished Food Fight and released it in the UK under Boulevard Entertainment in 2012 and in the US under Viva Entertainment a year later, resulting in a barely finished, barely organized, barely watchable movie that we know today as one of the worst animated films ever made. So now that we know about the movie's history, let's recap backwards to see where the real problem came from. Is it the fall of Fireman's Fund for cobbling it together so terribly into the infamous finished product? No because they wouldn't have stepped in if it weren't for the impatience of a couple of companies. So is it Lionsgate and Story Arc's fault for shutting production down because of always missing the deadlines in the same veins of Richard Williams' The Thief and the Cobbler? No, because the crew was having a hard time to comprehend the technology they're using in order to make the new version of the animation. So there must be no other option except for the thieves back in late 2002 who stole the hard drives of the original movie in progress. It must be their fault for the movie's failure, right? No. Not even. The movie's downfall started long before any of these events happened. If you have paid close attention, you'll notice that there's a bit of a pattern of production issues from the continuous delays, the strange choices in animation, the okay to add in weird sexual innuendos, and the animators always getting surprises on what to change. This was all caused by one problem, one step, one direction, one man. The one moment that caused Food Fight to seal its doom was when Larry Kasanov decided to become the producer and director. The key word that hinted all this was when I said that he was never in charge of an animated project in his entire life. If you look back in the history with that in mind, you'll notice that Larry had absolutely no idea what he was doing. There is a massive disconnection between the crew and Larry to the point that not only is Kasanov not on the same page as them, he's not even on the same book. It's this miscommunication that led to almost all the production issues and leaving the movie with absolutely no sense of direction. And you know what's the worst part of all this? Nobody was able to stop him because Larry's not only the big boss of the movie, but he's also the big boss of the studio. Larry's the one in charge because he's the one with all the money. So the crew had to do what he said, even if he had no idea what he was doing. He made himself judge, jury, and executioner to have full control of the project. By the way, after I saw the film and I started editing my review, I accidentally discovered the 2002 trailer with the original animation, and honestly, it left me in complete shock. Sure, by today's standards, it does look dated, but in terms of computer animation in the early 2000s and compared to how it ended up, 
It actually looks pretty decent. It looks enjoyable to watch, and it even did a good job in the cartoony style. To say the least, I was pretty impressed. But with that said, let's pretend that Foo Fight never had those production troubles or had their hardware stolen. Would it have been a good film if production went smoothly? Honestly, no, because keep in mind, the animation is only a small part of the reason why this film is so bad. Even if it has the good animation, the movie would still suffer from terrible writing, no consistency, disgusting sex jokes, awful food puns, unlikable characters, and a story that's just all over the place. Now, I know I sound a bit harsh to pin the entire blame on one person, and I won't deny that Kasanoff is an amazing businessman who is able to run a pretty effective company like Threshold. But there's just no other way to put it. And despite Larry knowing how to run a business, he's just absolutely clueless when it comes to running a movie. Now, the moral of this story is, no matter how good of an idea you have, you must leave it to the professional to execute it right. Otherwise, you'd be spending years driving yourself and a lot of people into madness that would ultimately lead to possibly your biggest failure. What made movies like Who Framed Roger Rabbit, Toy Story, and The Lego Movie work is because they were run by people who knew what they were doing and know how to execute it. Admittedly, a movie that features well-known food mascots does have a lot of promise but only if it was in the right hands. And that's where the source of the problem is. The project fell into the wrong hands and it ended up being completely crumbled. By the way, stick around at the end and I'll give you guys a little bonus with the original 2002 trailer. And to spice things up, I'll be doing comparison shots between that and how it ended up in the movie. Now, one last thing I would like to add is a quote from Freshhold that they used to promote the movie. All of this technology, work, time, talent, and artistry will make food fight unlike anything ever before seen on film. Well, with everything that went wrong in this movie, at least they got one thing right. The cup. 